Good morning, everyone. Good morning. There, there we go. Welcome, welcome to Sunday worship here at St. David's and Northminster United Churches. It is good to be with you all this morning, both here in person and those who are connecting with us online this morning. Welcome to you as well. I'm going to invite our candle lighter to come forward. Um, everything you should need this morning is found both in the program you received as well as on PowerPoint. And feel free to stand or sit as you are able and make yourself comfortable. Our washrooms are located just through these doors here at the back, um, through the lobby. So now I invite you to focus on the lights of these candles in our midst. The light of Christ that is the focal point of this community, lighting the way. And the light of our affirming ministries candle that shines brightly on the many colors of God's beautifully woven creation. And the light of truth and reconciliation, reminding us of the blessing of being guests on this Treaty 7 land that we call home. What we pay attention to is what we are formed by. And so let us begin this time of listening, of hearing that still, small voice and finding our own true selves. Come and listen. Sometimes we just need to get away in order to hear that still, small voice within. This quiet voice is an attribute of the holy, living God, as Elijah found when he retreated to a cave where he expected to experience God in big wind and earthquake and fire. So this morning I ask you, what is your cave? What place, maybe it's a path or a garden or a park or a rocking chair or a shoreline, and what practice in that space? Maybe it's walking or journaling or reading or creating some sort of art. What place and what practice helps you get quiet enough for long enough so that you can hear past the chaos and into the depths of your life? This summer season, we're quieting things down in order to heighten our attention to that still, small voice, that still, small voice of God and our own true self, listening through prayer as well as meditation on sacred texts is an ancient spiritual practice. And so let us come and rest and come and listen. I'm going to invite you now to sit quietly in the silence 
And there's no expectation of what you have to think about or what you might be thinking. And don't worry about the sounds of other people around you or sounds from the street or the building creaking or whatever it might be. Just if those sounds happen, let them flow in and out of your mind. Be aware of your breath in the silence. Maybe feel the beat of your heart. Just clear your mind. Just be in silence. And if that's hard for you, think about these questions. Maybe contemplate. What are the spaces in between? Where might we experience God in the spaces? Perhaps in the pauses between music. Maybe between the space of a bird's call or in the lull after the wind moves through the trees. Let us be in silence. our prayer of response. For that which then I thought was right, have mercy, God. For that which now I regret, bring healing, God. For the times I know not what to do, guide me, God. Come and rest, Come and listen. Know that grace and guidance surround you at each and every moment that we turn to receive them. Thanks be to God. We sing again. Amen. If you're comfortable standing, let's do that now as we sing, Come and Find the Quiet Center.
please be seated. So for our conversation time this morning, along the lines of our, our series, I wanted to invite you all to just share some ideas with me, with each other around the idea of prayer and the ways and the places and the things we do. Elijah talked about that cave he went to and the places then that we then retreat to or that have meaning for us when we want to connect with God. And so first thing I wanted you to do is just look around the sanctuary for a minute and, and look at this place of worship. Look, turn around and look up. You can wave to the salt team that's upstairs. Hello, salt team. And... And, and just look around, look at the windows and look what's up above you and look at the, the different colors, the banners, the, the flowers, the candles, the music, uh, all these things. What would you say is a favorite place or thing in the sanctuary for you? Just call out, what do you love most about this worship space? The cross, what else? The affirming, um, the affirming ministry um, flag, yes. What else? Pride flag. The music. What else? The kites. I love the kites too. What else? What else do you love about the space? The banners. A couple people said banners. The garden. Yes. The flowers. Mm -hmm. Windows. Yeah. So many beautiful things that make this space what it is. Now think a little bit in this space and also beyond these walls, but I was thinking about the ways or maybe even the places more so first. What if we talked first about the places we pray? Now I think obviously in, in a sanctuary, this is one place we pray in chairs. In some other churches, there would be kneeling rails. Does anyone ever use a kneeling rail or remember using kneeling rails in earlier days? Yes, for sure. Where else do we pray? What other places do we pray? In nature, yes. In a garden, for sure. Behind the wheel of a car, okay. In certain situations, you bet. Prayer happens in lots of places. <laughs> Sometimes we pray in a labyrinth. Um, there's a labyrinth on the floor in the gym at Northminster. And on the 26th, I'm inviting you all to join me at the labyrinth out in Silver Springs. A labyrinth is a place we pray. How about the ways we pray, like with our bodies? What do we sometimes do with our bodies when we pray? We already talked about kneeling or sitting. What else are the ways we might pray? Sometimes we close our eyes. Sometimes we open our eyes. Sometimes we sing. Yes, we sing a prayer. Pardon? Bow our heads. Yes, sometimes we bow our heads when we pray. Walking in nature. Walking is a prayer. We put our hands together. Sometimes we open our hands, right? There's lots of things we can do with our hands. So there's many ways. I miss one. There's many ways that we pray. So when we look at all these different aspects of prayer, the places, the how, the when, I am going to invite you this week to think a little bit about creating, you maybe even have one, but if you don't, think about how you might create a space for prayer. What might you do this week to make a space for prayer in your home or on your deck or Maybe it's in a corner of your bedroom or a quiet spot or just a place that's a bit more peaceful than everywhere else, away from some distractions, and what you might do to make it special. A candle to light or a rock to hold or a Bible or a picture, like an, a picture of Jesus or some other beautiful scenery that helps you focus. But ways, maybe it's a comfortable pillow or prayer shawl, ways that you can create a space for prayer this week. And to create that space that just allows you to listen. And so a place where you can listen for God and maybe repeat that line that says, Be still and know that I am God. 
be still and know that I am God. Just those simple words and then listen in the silence. I hope that can be something you try this week. Be still and know that I am God. And then we have some special music to enjoy today. Hear the words from Psalm 5, verses 3 to 7. Lord, 
In the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I lay it all out before you. Then I wait expectantly. Because you are a God, aren't a God who enjoys wickedness. Evil doesn't live with you. I will enter your house because of your abundant, faithful love. I will be, bow down at your holy temple, honoring you. I'm reading from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 to 16. At that place, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, throw down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he answered, I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your alto altars. Altos? <laughs> That's a Freudian slip. <laughs> and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. I'm so sorry. Then the Lord said to him, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint, <coughs> anoint Hazael as king over Amram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimchi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, as prophet in your place. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. <laughs> we all get to enjoy a laugh once in a while. <laughs> thanks for reading, Susan. So I'm really enjoying in this series because we get to take some time with these Old Testament stories that we often don't delve into with our normal three-year lectionary cycle. So Elijah was a Hebrew prophet who got into a great deal of trouble, you might say, putting it lightly, with King Ahab and Queen Jezebel in the 9th century BCE. Jezebel had sworn an oath to kill Elijah, and Elijah was pretty convinced that she would do just that. And if he had to escape, he had to go to the wilderness or else he would be fearing for his life. So great drama, right? Fearing the, the, the stories and the back and flow of this Jezebel and Elijah and the threats and the, the running and the fear and the what comes next. So at the time of this story, Elijah is feeling pretty lonely. Most of the other priests and prophets of Yahweh by this point have either been killed already by Jezebel or have decided that the pressures are just too great to continue. And so in his loneliness and his desperation, Elijah goes deep into the wilderness until he reaches Mount Horeb which other biblical passages call Sinai, which is the t where the Ten Commandments were originally given. In the English tradition of this passage, it says that Elijah went to a cave on the mountain in order to connect with God. But the Hebrew text 
says that Elijah went to the cave. So this is the writer's way of indicating that Elijah did not simply go to any random cave to connect with God, that, that he went to the one that every Hebrew would have known was the ultimate cave for meeting God. So spiritual pilgrimage of sorts. He had a destination in mind. Excuse me. And so, as well, this was the very cave, it's known, that Moses was said. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Pardon me. It was the very cave that Moses was said to have stood at the entrance of when he asked to meet God. So Elijah travels in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights to this cave. He goes there because it's the one spot he can think of where God has made an appearance of some sort and he's so desperate at this point that he'll go to whatever length is necessary. This story notes that God asks Elijah twice to name why he's there. It's sort of that story's way of of emphasizing, of telling us that when it comes to seeking guidance from God, it's helpful to be quite clear as to what kind of guidance you're looking for. If you're looking for a specific response, then a specific question might be necessary, right? And make sure it's one that actually matters really deeply to you. Chances are, if it matters deeply to you, it will also matter greatly to God. Often asking the right question is as important as listening for an answer. The fact that God's response, and love this part, is not found in wind and earthquake or fire is also what's really significant because, significant because these things are often the greatest metaphors in the Bible for the voice of God, right? Wind and earthquake and fire. You might even recall Jesus comparing the Holy Spirit to the wind. In John 3, it says, The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. And so this story talks about the silence after and between those things to tell us that God's voice does not necessarily come within these ancient equivalents of flashing neon signs saying, pay attention, here's your answer right here, right now. But that often it comes in that sort of subtlety that the only way you can tell that anything has happened is that maybe your perception has just changed ever slow, so slightly. The story may also be speaking to us about the depth of Elijah's response or surrender to God. When God's voice doesn't come in the usual or expected ways, Elijah doesn't pretend that it has. He didn't make a big show of things. He doesn't put words in God's mouth. He doesn't pretend that God's coming is coming this way and wants to tell everyone about it. He doesn't alter or manipulate the situation either. <clears throat> so this is important for us. If we're going to ask God to communicate with us, we'd better be sure we're willing to let God show up in whatever way God chooses, even if it's not in the form we expect or the time frame we presume. When we connect with God, we may experience that connection as a tug into some form of concrete action, but also not always. But when we get that glimpse of that higher ground, we eventually feel some sort of tug to move toward it, whether that's a relationship with another person or it's out of a job that's driving us crazy or it's into some greater confidence on something we're already doing but had felt unsure about. <clears throat> it comes across in many ways, doesn't it? 
Elijah's story suggests that the action into which God moves us may often seem unrealistic at first. And we question if we're capable of doing it. For instance, Elijah is to anoint two individuals as kings over Israel and Judah, but it's not like anyone can just go and do that, right? Surely he would have been inclined to protest that he's not qualified for the job or that the job is just too dangerous because you know Jezebel will catch him if he tries to do that, right? <laughs> but remember, God always assumes that we're in this together and we are not alone. And what course of action is too risky or too high with the creator of the universe on our side, right? We can do anything if God is with us and we're not alone. This coming week, we talked about this before, I invite you again to try and find your cave. Create your cave, tweak your cave if you already have one, but find that special spot where you can step out of the fray of life for just a moment and find that quiet time, maybe even at the start of the day, just for a moment before life gets hectic. But really, any time will do. There's no right or wrong way. <clears throat> Again, it could be your bedroom or your deck or your, your living room or you're out for a walk, whatever it might be. And to find that question that is really important to you and not too abstract, like no questions like, what is the meaning of life? Or why is there evil in the world? I don't want general big picture questions. I want really specific, highly personal question, something specific just to you, that you will actually remember it later. It has to be that kind of question. But find something that's really important to you and, and see where it takes you. And the next step, of course, is you have to be willing to hear an answer. That's the next step. Get so willing that you can hear it in your gut when it comes. And get so willing that you will really be open to hearing God in whatever form God chooses to address you, even if it's very unexpected and unconventional. And get so willing that you will remain watchful throughout the day for a response. Keep asking that same question or stating that same need each day. Just find that cave, that space, and stay there to ask the question and maybe open for a response. And then just go about your day. Don't look for it or be overly concerned. Let God do the action, but just be watchful like Elijah. <clears throat> Pay attention to the music, to the conversations you're having, to that inner voice in your heart. And of course, don't expect God to act on your timetable. A response you can trust might not come for days or weeks, or maybe you'll be lucky and it'll come the second you wrote that question down or asked it. But whatever it happens, whenever, a response will come. So listen, listen for that still, small voice, which, and I love this image, I read it this week, watch for that still, small voice like the gently falling snow, because it can't be directly heard, but it does change your surroundings. Isn't that beautiful? And don't be afraid to make mistakes. Doesn't matter how you do it, don't worry about any of that, no right or wrong. For in the realm of prayer, intentionality is more important than technique. When we're just intentional, every step, and each pause may be transformed by grace. Amen. We're going to sing again. Oh, beautiful Gaia. Gaia is a Celtic term for God. So stand if you're able and we'll sing together. Oh, beautiful Gaia. <coughs>
please be seated. <clears throat> Let's now join our hearts and minds in prayer and pray as you are comfortable. Hands open, hands closed, eyes open, eyes closed, as you are comfortable. Eternal God, we thank you today for your goodness. You have given us beautiful days. You bless us richly with goodness daily. We thank you and praise you. We live in a time of so many mixed messages. And we ask today for your wisdom and the heart and mind to pause, to make space, to listen for that wisdom. Bring resolve and healing and grace to places in our lives that need it most, to places in our community, our country, our world, situations of conflict, violence, unrest, places where different and competing interests <clears throat> strive for our attention and our loyalty. Help us, God, to nurture wise and discerning spirits. Help us to give wisdom, to assess the clamoring voices and the concerns with which we are daily bombarded by. Give us calm so that we might learn to be accepting of all the diversity you have created, to see it as beauty, not challenge. Give us grace to be peacemakers and mediators of understanding where there is conflict. Give us wisdom to know what is of ultimate value for your hopes for us and to make wise choices amidst that hope. O oh God, give us wisdom, give us grace and discernment. Give us the will to be faithful. Give us the power to love. Give us the time and space to really listen for how these prayers might blossom into reality. We gather all of these prayers together and we join our voices in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. <clears throat> Amen. This is the time in our worship where we, we offer our gifts and we bless the many ways that we give of our lives each day and today gifts given of our hearts and our minds, our financial gifts. Let us bless these gifts. Let's pray. Generous God, in grace you freely give. And in love you urge us to imitate you. 
Let these gifts bear joyful witness to the justice for which you long and offer a faithful response to the loving care you have first given us. Amen. Time for some announcements. It's wonderful. There's so many things happening through the summer we can share in with each other. Um, many and all of them actually are found in the weekly emails you receive from the church offices, so please take time to read them. Um, next Sunday after church is our Alvin Dixon Memorial Run. Again, this is a, a project, a program that all congregations across Canada are invited to do sometime in the month of July um, in partnership with General Council, which is happening this month to uh, raise awareness in memory of Alvin Dixon and to help financially support Truth and Reconciliation Initiative. So next Sunday after church, bring your lawn chair if you're going to cheer people on or come to church in your running gear, your walking shoes, whatever you're comfortable in and plan to participate in some way by walking a short or longer distance or running if running's your thing. And anytime this week or next, you can click on the link in your email to make a donation in support of the Alvin Dixon Memorial Run. And your donation goes, just so you know, to the St. David's North Minster team so we can compare our successes with other churches across Canada and see how we do. That will be kind of fun, a bit of friendly competition. So, so and of course, that's a, you'll, you will receive a tax receipt by making a donation through that link. The day after, on the 18th, a week tomorrow, is our summer swim, a sunset swim at Highwood Outdoor Pool. Come and swim, bring your grandkids, bring your kids, or just bring your, um, yourself and come and sit in the beautiful chairs on the deck and have a visit. So plan to attend next Monday night, the 18th. And beyond that, on the 26th, um, all the details are there, our labyrinth walk, a form of prayer, right? Labyrinth walk, a beautiful spot to pray. And then we might enjoy the, have you been to the botanical gardens? It's amazing. Just gorgeous. The volunteers who maintain those gardens, it is kind of a hidden gem in Calgary in the Northwest. Thanks to everyone who have signed up to read scriptures from both congregations. You have received now a sign up genius link um, oh, and there's flat Jesus too. So that's something else for sure to, um, to plan to pick up your flat Jesus at the back, color it, take him with you, and take pictures through the summer. Um, but back to the scripture. If you're on Sign Up Genius, please click to sign up. We do need scripture readers still for the next, um, I think it's two Sundays we need scripture readers. And Sally is part of an, an organization that organizes that wonderful Remembrance Memorial gathering at Olympic Plaza for Hiroshima Remembrance Day on August 6th. And she's looking for choir people, people who love to sing, to participate in a choir that night. So has Sally, raise your hand because not everybody knows you. And anyone who might like to join or just have questions about it can reach out to Sally about being part of that choir. I think that's all I need to mention today. Am I missing anything anyone would like highlighted? Okay, we'll look forward to seeing you at any and all of these upcoming events. And our blessing to end our time today. To the call to listen, O oh God, we are mindful. In the search for wholeness, O oh God, we are hopeful. For the journey, O oh God, we are grateful. Listen every day until we meet again. Get quiet enough to hear that still, small voice and find your own. And may the creator and the redeemer and the sustainer be with you all. And all God's people say, Amen. Let's sing.
As we go out into the day, let us greet each other with the passing of the peace. Peace be with you all. Please greet one another.